This natural homemade spray-on deodorant won't stain clothes, contains no baking soda, and causes no itch or redness. My other go-to homemade natural deodorant cream recipe is quite a bit old now. I've used it for a few years and it's still one that I use today as it's really effective. However, some of you have been telling me that you don't react well to baking soda and we're looking for another option. So this is the alternative you guys can use if you're looking for a baking soda free deodorant. For some people, baking soda gives them an itchy red rash when used on their underarms. The reason why it's widely used in natural deodorant recipes is because it's fantastic for absorbing odours, but some people just aren't able to tolerate it, which is totally fine, as there are many other alternatives out there, such as this recipe. Now, one common complaint with oil-based recipes is that they can stain clothing if you don't wait for it to dry before getting dressed. This isn't very practical, especially for that early morning rush to work, so I went looking for a quick dry alternative that wasn't oil-based, didn't contain baking soda and actually worked. Now, I love to use my citrus deodorant recipe along with spraying on this deodorant spray recipe especially when I'm going to the gym just for an extra powerful deodorant but using one or the other works just fine. The first deodorant recipe I'll be showing you is the magnesium oil deodorant. Now I'm sharing two today as some people find that the magnesium oil deodorant may not be strong enough for them and that's okay. That's why I'm sharing this other deodorant recipe that's a little stronger that works really well at keeping odor away. So instead of using an oil based deodorant spray we'll be using this magnesium oil to begin with. Now fun fact, magnesium oil doesn't contain any actual oil, though it does feel oily, so it won't leave any stains and is used because it's incredibly effective at preventing underarm odor, plus you get a nice healthy boost of magnesium along with it. You can choose to take magnesium oil yourself and I'll share the recipe to making your own magnesium oil at home in the cards above or you can buy a ready made version. Just a note before we begin, some people may experience a tingling sensation when they first start using magnesium oil. This is quite normal, especially for those who are low in magnesium, and it should fade in a couple of days. Also, another note, if you do shave and then spray on the magnesium oil deodorant, it can sting a little bit to begin with, but it'll fade pretty quickly. So if you do find that it does sting, just rub it in using your hands and it will help to stop that sensation. A tip for this magnesium oil spray deodorant is if you want to make it more effective, just mix three quarters of a cup of water with one quarter of a cup of apple cider vinegar and apply that to your underarms after showering. Then let that dry before applying this spray deodorant. This just helps to remove any natural bacteria found on your underarms and helps this deodorant to last longer. Alright, let's get started in making the magnesium oil deodorant. So to begin with, you're going to need half a cup or four ounces of magnesium oil and 10 to 15 drops of your favorite essential oils, or you can use a mixture. I used a mixture today and I added a bit more of essential oil because I love my deodorant to be really strong and last longer throughout the day. So I added around 20 to 40 drops of essential oil for my deodorant today and that was just a mixture of lavender tea tree and orange essential oil then you're just going to need a four ounce or larger glass spray bottle to keep your deodorant spray in now it's advised to have a dark spray bottle as having a light spray bottle means that the essential oils inside are more likely to get damaged by sunlight if they come into contact with that but having a dark like amber type spray bottle glass just helps to protect it from light damage and means that essential oils may last longer but I didn't mind using both a clear and amber glass bottle today because I'll be keeping both in my cupboard in my bathroom out of direct sunlight so to make your magnesium oil spray deodorant, all you're going to do is grab your homemade magnesium oil or store-bought magnesium oil. Then you're going to pour it into your glass spray bottle and add any essential oils that you'll be using. Then shake it up before you're ready to use it, just to make sure that the essential oils aren't separated on top and are mixed throughout the spray deodorant. To use, spray a small amount on your underarms and rub it in gently. Then let it dry for about 5 seconds and it's good to go. Now, like I said, for some, this magnesium oil deodorant spray may not be enough. 
So for those who have tried magnesium deodorant spray and found it ineffective, here is another natural deodorant spray using ethanol alcohol, like vodka, gin and alcohol like that, but not isopropyl alcohol, which is that rubbing alcohol you can get, because it can be quite toxic when used for long periods of time. So just stick to the ethanol alcohol. And many have found this to be really effective at keeping odour away. So a few things to keep in mind with making your alcohol based natural deodorant spray. So a lower proof alcohol means it will have lighter coverage, which is just odour protection, while a higher proof alcohol means it will have more odour protection. So what I mean by this is that on the alcohol bottles they'll usually have a proof reading and you can figure it out from the percentage of alcohol on the bottle as well but usually you'll have it written so if your alcohol says 70 to 90 proof it just means light coverage whereas if it says 90 to 100 proof it has medium coverage and if it's 120 plus proof it has strong coverage so if you want your deodorant spray to be really strong go for the 120 plus proof alcohol also keep in mind it may take some time for your armpits to adjust to using a different deodorant especially if you're going from a commercial one to a natural one. So an armpit detox may help with this, I'll share how to do this in the cards above. But usually it takes around 3 days to adjust to this deodorant. So on the first day it's recommended to spray 2-3 to three spritz under each arm in the morning and then again around 3pm on the first day. On the second day, it's recommended to spray two spritz under each arm in the morning and then again right before going to bed. And then on the third day, it's recommended to spray two spritz on each underarm and then go the entire day without spraying again. So to make this alcohol-based natural deodorant, all you're going to need is two tablespoons of gluten-free vodka. Again, follow the guide that I just mentioned on which proof you'll be going for when choosing your alcohol. I found it was very challenging to find a gluten-free vodka that was 120 plus proof, which was the strong coverage. So I just went with the light coverage, which was around 80 proof for my type of alcohol. Then you'll be needing essential oils, so you can choose what essential oils you'll be using. Again, I'll be using lavender, tea tree and orange, and I used around 20 to 40 drops of those all together. Then you're going to need a mister bottle. This one was just a plastic clear mister bottle. But again, if you want to protect the essential oils inside much more, go for a dark amber mister bottle. So to make this deodorant spray, combine the alcohol and essential oils in a mister spray bottle and shake to combine all the ingredients. To use, just remember to shake before use really well to make sure the essential oils are combined in the alcohol and give each underarm two to three spritz and let them air dry. Apply again after exercising or heavy exertion if you need to. And that's it, that's how you make these two deodorant sprays. So these are the two deodorant sprays you can make. So this one has the magnesium oil in it and this one has the vodka. I've heard the vodka is stronger because you can adjust the I guess, percentage of alcohol, like, I can't remember what the word it's called, the percentage of volume of alcohol that you buy. So you can get the 120 plus proof if you want it to be really strong or if you want it to just be semi strong you get the 90 to 120 or the one below that which is like the 80%. I've got the light one today, I was having trouble looking for a gluten free vodka and that was the only one I could find. So if you do come across a 120 plus proof vodka that's also gluten free if you hit the jackpot because I found it very challenging to find, I'll keep looking. But for now this one will do, I just sort of couple it with my natural deodorant cream as well and I'll be super, like I'll smell so good afterwards. I keep them in the bathroom in the cupboard because you need to keep it out of direct sunlight because it has essential oils in it and they can deteriorate over time if left out where the sunlight can get them. It'll damage the essential oils and it won't smell as fragrant. So if you want to preserve this deodorant and make it smell nicer for longer, you want to make sure that you're keeping it out of direct sunlight. So I just keep it in my bathroom in the cupboard there just, just for easy use. I always use deodorant there so it's just easy to have it there or just in any place that's out of direct sunlight and it'll help keep it longer. That's why also using the dark bottles helps as well rather than the clear ones um, because it helps protect the essential oils and what's inside more because of the dark outside. So that's something to keep in mind as well but because I'm just going to keep it in the cupboard I didn't mind using a clear one. Yeah, hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Do let me know if you try any of the recipes out or if you have another deodorant recipe that you guys make. Please share. I'd love to hear it. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope to see you again in my next video. Bye.
Bye.